My next guest and her family were facing a prolonged season of unemployment, job layoffs, and then finally a season of COVID. They had children. How were they going to survive? How were they going to pay the bills? Stay tuned to find out what happened. Welcome to The Prayer Investigator. I'm Linda Evans Shepherd. My guest today is Sarah Hamacher. Sarah is a romantic writer, and her latest book is The Dark Guest, up for a SELA Award. She is also an AWSA certified author coach, and her podcast is called The Romantic Side of Suspense. She and her husband and her four children live in Virginia with their three cats. So Sarah, tell us your story. In the summer of 2019, my husband lost his job. He'd been with this association for about a dozen or so years, and his job duties had changed a lot, and it just wasn't really what he signed up for. They let him go, which was, he's the primary breadwinner for our family. We're a family of seven. I have four biological children, and they were all between upper elementary to high school at the time. And we foster and we had an autistic preschool foster child with us at the time. And so it was a little bit of a panic time. I mean, you prepare for this if, if you can by setting money aside in a savings account, et cetera. So we had money and I'm a freelance writer and a coach and I, you know, there's some income from that, but there's not, I wasn't enough to like pay the bills and to Add to that, my husband had a, a health crisis. He has hydrocephalus and that squatter on the brain that's controlled by a shunt. And the shunt, unbeknownst to us, stopped working. So we had a bit of a health scare, you know, but God was gracious through that because we didn't have health insurance because it was through his job. And God was gracious and let us sign up for COBRA for him only at literally at the last minute before I took him to the ER because we didn't know what was going on at the time. So God brought us graciously through that. And, you know, my husband kept looking for a job and looking for a job and looking for a job. He had some interviews, nothing. He got a part-time job at Barnes and Noble bookstore. He loves books, which was great. Got him out of the house, but that's not going to pay the bills. And I just remember thinking, Linda, during that time, and he did get a severance package. So it, you know, that helped us for a few months, but I just remember, and I posted about it on Facebook and it came up and popped up in my memory actually this week. So it was kind of a interesting juxtaposition just to remember that I remember balancing our checkbook and going, how are we paying the bills? Hmm. I, I, I didn't know because the math didn't make sense. I mean, I could see it on the page. It was making sense, but considering what was coming in and what was going out, it just... I was baffled. I was like, I was like God's math happening here. And all through that process, I just remember we, we deliberately just were so grateful, just so thankful to God for the job he had given my husband, for the way we were able to handle that health crisis, for the severance package, for trying to be good stewards of the money we had and saving and all of that during that time. And then COVID hit. Oh, okay. so, yeah. So <laughs> he lost his other job at Barnes and Noble. Everything shut down and it was a trying time, but there was blessings in that. The blessing that my husband, when COVID hit, could take care of our foster child so that I could do the work that God gave me. And he gave me a lot of work, which was a blessing as a freelancer. Sometimes you don't know where that work is coming from. And he dropped a couple of extra jobs in my lap that paid well. And so that was very helpful. And one of our daughters, she was a high school junior and she explored getting, you know, free lunch for our kids at school, you know, signing up for and that I'm like, go for it. You know, we were on Medicare for a while, Medicaid, which the other one, the one that's not for seniors, <laughs> I always forget, you know, for a while because we qualified for it. You know, we got the stem, then all the stimulus stuff came in, and that was a huge blessing for our family. And all through that, I could see God taking care of it. My husband did get a job for six months, let allowed us to catch up on some health stuff with better insurance and some things, but it just was a horrible fit. And they did terrible onboarding during the pandemic. And so he was again unemployed, 
for another nine months until his current job, which is a good fit. But through it all, it was just like God just dropped these little reminders in our lap. We got an anonymous card that first Christmas in the mail. I still don't know who gave it to us with 10 $100 bills in it. Whoa. Yeah. A thousand dollars. And it just said Merry Christmas on it in block handwriting. Like we, I didn't know who it was from. I knew it was from someone in the area. I could tell by the postmark, but I just started crying in the kitchen. It was just such a wonderful reminder of how God works, right? Because we're praying. We knew people were praying for us and God used those prayers to, to lay on someone's heart. Hey, you need to send the hammerker some money. Mm -hmm. And it was such a huge gesture. <laughs> we were just like floor and just, and it really helped our kids and their faith as well. You know, just to realize that we're praying and sometimes God answers our prayers in very tangible ways. Sometimes he just shores you up spiritually so you can keep going and keep your faith strong and keep believing. But other times he gives us those tangible blessings. That's just amazing. And I want to ask you, Sarah, do you think that it was because you had a thankful heart that God was your provider. What do you think motivated God to provide for you and your family? I mean, I, it's hard to say, cause I don't want to say if you're thankful, God will provide because we know that's not, that's not always cause and effect, but for our family, we have always tried to emphasize the divine providence of God and the sovereignty of God and how we view that is that. God brings things into our life that are wonderful and that are hard. And no matter which side of the coin it is, it's still for our good and his glory. Mm. And when we really take that deep into our hearts and we live that way, when things are going great, it's very helpful. It's kind of natural to live that way when things are not going great. I'm not saying there weren't times when I was crying in the bathroom because of the stress or that, you know, everything was perfect. But underneath it all, we knew somehow this, these stretches of unemployment were for my husband's good, for my good, for our children's good, for our foster child's good, and for God's glory. And so just having that attitude and this a thankfulness of all the, and we got grocery cards from friends and other things like checks from relatives that just showed up at so, you know, not at the last minute, but at the right time uh, and how grateful we were. And before this, we tried to be grateful with, you know, generous with our own money. You know, I've written checks to friends who needed it. We support a lot of charities when we can. We've, you know, give generously to the church and we, you know, have helped relatives out who needed some money, all just like not alone, just gifts, give some money because we had and they needed. And Sometimes I think those kind of open handedness about our finances can really sometimes reap those benefits when we needed it. And it does feel a little weird when you've been the giver to be the receiver. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was also a lesson I think we learned because it was felt a little awkward sometimes to get a check from someone and be like, yeah, I need it, but this feels weird. <laughs> to, to need, you know, to eat, need it. And we, we cashed it. We used it because that's how God was helping us to meet our obligations. You recognize God's provision when it came in the mail. And I think we have to be open to that. We can't be so prideful mm -hmm. that we can't turn down God's provision just because it was a check somebody gave us when you agree. I, I would Linda. And I think for one of the things that i I feel like God was teaching us through that was to be a grateful and thankful receiver. Mm. Again, when you've been the giver all the time, it, it does feel weird, weird <laughs> to, to suddenly be the one who's in need. And we were open about that. We let people know, not that I can't get the groceries this week, but just that, yeah, my husband's still out of work. We're still looking you know, he was very faithful in applying to jobs. He was, you know, he worked when he could. And we knew that God was going to provide when, when it was time for God to provide for us. And the waiting was hard. <laughs> Waiting's always hard, <laughs> no matter what you're waiting for. 
And that was another lesson, just that God's timing is perfect and he will provide for us as he, as he needs. Do you know what I really appreciate from that is that God did provide. Mm -hmm. You were able to trust him even when things weren't going the way you wanted. And how were you able to trust God like that? You know, I think it goes back to just how we lived our lives before then, how we trusted him with the decisions we made before then. It wasn't, some of them didn't feel as big as the decisions we had to make in an extended time of unemployment, but there were still decisions that we made during our life together. Back in 2003, we had a tree fall through our house during hurricane Isabel. I live in Virginia Mm. and we had just moved in literally like six months before then. And we had an almost one-year-old daughter. And I think that really helped our foundation for thankfulness and trusting God. And we just kind of took some of the lessons we learned from that and how God provided and helped us through that. Cause we were, we couldn't live in our house for five months until it was rebuilt. And just all the things that happened with that, that just was like almost a turning point. We'd only been married in like three years at the time, but it just really was a faith strengthener and just a good reminder of God's providence and his kindness and his goodness, even in the face of things that are very stressful. And so we kind of took that and built upon it in our lives to continue with that thankfulness, that that knowledge that things happen in our life that are uncomfortable. They're not always as big as a job loss, but there's other things that make us go, oh, really God, this is what I have to do. This is what you've given me to do. And just that trying to turn our hearts around, even in those small circumstances, because it's the small things. If we don't, if we're not faithful in being grateful and thankful and recognizing the providence and sovereignty of God and his goodness toward us in the small things, we're not going to have that, that well to draw from in the big things. Sarah, that was well said. And you know, I know that there are people who have tuned in today who have some small things that they're worried about, but there are other people who are just overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. They're not sure how they're going to get through it. How would you pray? Would you pray over them? Would you just pray for that one who's just like, I'm really stuck and I don't know what to do. And I've got bills too. It would be my privilege, Linda. Dear Jesus, you know the plans you have for us. You know the place you have placed us in our families, in our communities, in our churches. And you know the circumstances each one of us face. Sometimes they're easy circumstances. Sometimes they're the dream come true circumstances, but more often than not, they're the hard circumstances. There's the illness diagnosis that we didn't want. There's the job that we didn't get or the job that we lost. There are the bills that we never seem to get ahead on. From all angles, there are pressures and stressors and all the things that wanna pull us away from you. So my prayer, right now is that for those who are feeling hopeless, helpless, who don't know how they're going to pay their bills, that you would, first of all, just meet them where they are and give them comfort. And second, that you would use your people to bless them, whether that's a home-cooked meal or a check in the mail or a job offer or whatever. Just encourage them through your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That's a beautiful prayer. And I'm just going to add a little to it. And I just want to say, Lord, you are our provider. Lord, you are the God that we can trust. And Lord, you are the God that we can look back and see the miracles of all the things that you have done to get us Mm -hmm. to this point in time. And we do thank you. And we do praise you. And we just lay down our needs before you. We lay down our lack before you. And thank you that you are going to see us through. And thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today. We so enjoyed it. And hey, everyone, we hope that you will like, share, and subscribe. And we have a gift for you. It's a beautiful blessing that you can play and print. Just go to myprayergift.com. And remember this, God loves you. And he wants you to talk to him.